Just do it! Welcome to the No, I'm Meg Turney. I'm Ashley Jenkins. You can take your red rocks and shove them, Mars! We're going to Alpha Centauri. Interplanetary travel is out, and Interstellar is the new hotness. Thanks to a newly announced program by Russian billionaire and internet entrepreneur Yuri Milner, who's joined by cosmologist Stephen Hawking. See you later, Solar System. Bye! We're tired of your wishy-washy, I don't know how many planets are in me, bullshit. Pluto is a planet! Well, let's not get ahead of ourselves. We're not sending any people just yet. The just unveiled Breakthrough Starshot is a multi-billion dollar initiative to send nanocrafts, which are small probes the size of iPhones, essentially, to the nearest star system sometime in the next 20 years. Speaking at the press conference, Dr. Hawking said, I believe that what makes us unique is transcending our limits. He went on to add, today we commit to the next great leap in the cosmos because we are human and our nature is to fly. Actually, our nature is to be on the ground. We don't have wings, but let's defy our nature. I just go like, interstellar. I like, I feel like that's like a Tumblr post with like a girl jumping. Our nature is to fly. It's Sorry, really I not. You. <laughs> uh, if that doesn't get you pumped, for interstellar travel, I don't know what will though. In our case, the nearest star system that we're aiming for is Alpha Centauri, which is just over four light years away. It also has a Metacritic score of 92, so that sounds pretty promising, hey! Yeah, the C4 wasn't so great. Breakthrough Starshot's current proposal is to send a rocket to space filled with thousands of these probes, which will then peace out to our neighbor star. The tiny robots, weighing literally as much as paper clips, will be powered by light to achieve speeds of up to one-fifth the speed of light. Of course, that's assuming the project gets it's billions of dollars in funding. Yuri Milner is giving $100 million of his own money to the effort, and Mark Zuckerberg has just joined the project for it as well. There are also loads of technical limitations to the light-powered travel method Breakthrough Starshot is currently proposing right That's now. light travel. Yes. Light travel method. Right now, the project's lead, Pete Warden, who is a former NASA director, he might be a little bit smart, says, there are about 20 key challenges we are asking the world's scientific experts to help us with, and we are willing to financially support their work. If you're up to snuff on your rocket science, which I'm sure you are, because this is the internet and everyone's an expert in everything, you'll know what Alpha Centauri is, being just over four light years away. Sort of a deceptive number. By conventional chemical-based space travel methods, we'd be looking at tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of years to reach the quote unquote nearby star. It's pretty hard to wrap our feeble human minds around distances in the trillions of miles, so for the sake of reference, Alpha Centauri is 300,000 times the distance that we are from our own sun. Still doesn't make any sense because that's 300,000 fucking huge. Even trillions we have troubles imagining. Yeah. Conventional space travel would take 155 days for us to reach our star and burst into flames. Right now, the fastest moving spacecraft we've got roaming our system is NASA's New Horizons, the first craft to visit Pluto. Hashtag still a planet. That's right. Uh, New Horizons is traveling at just under 40,000 miles per hour and took 9.5 years to get to Pluto. If we decided to turn New Horizons to Alpha Centauri, it would take somewhere in the neighborhood of 76 thousand years to get there. I hope we got a gas station along the way. Hey, oh, we're gonna need to fill up. A manned spacecraft traveling significantly lower at around 17,000 miles an hour could take 165 thousand years. By the time you get there, the people who've been on it have evolved past human anyway. But the light propulsion system used by Breakthrough Starshot will supposedly only take 20 years to reach Alpha Centauri, which is obviously an enormous leap in speed. Again, we're talking as fast as one-fifth the speed of light. Yeah. Light propulsion made a lot of noise a few months back when reports circulated that NASA was looking into it as a method to send people to Mars. At the theoretical speeds, which could be achieved by this form of space travel, we'd be at Mars in three days. We'd be like, see a moon in two minutes. With light propulsion, spacecraft are powered by an Earth-based laser array. The array sends lasers to push the spacecraft, where it will gradually gain speed over time. This pushing happens by means of a reflective sail. The momentum and energy of the photon particles will catch and carry it forward, much like wind on a sailboat. Sounds great in theory, but it's got a lot of problems, especially for manned space travel, which is why so many have discounted it as a means of getting us off of Earth. For one, it'd be difficult to maintain efficiency and contact with the sails over such long distances. The mirrors that we have installed on the moon, for instance, only return a fraction of photons sent to their destinations. We have mirrors on the moon. Of course we have mirrors I feel on the moon. like we're really, we're doing good. How else is the Earth supposed to selfie itself? That's true. Second, there's also the problem of navigating and slowing down. It basically be impossible with this method since it's just meant to send something moving forward as fast as possible for as long as possible. Unless we plan on sending people crashing into other planets, of course, in which case, you know, we got that part down. There's also the problem of the size of the array and the size of the sail. Breakthrough Starshot's nanocraft sails will be about 10 to 12 feet across each. Keep in mind, it's iPhone size craft, 10 to 12 foot sails. 
very big. The laser array itself will span one mile across and consist of thousands of lasers capable of generating 100 gigawatts of power. How many gigawatts? 100! Uh, it's 100 times, by the way, the output of a nuclear reactor. How many times the output of a time machine, though? Nobody knows. Scaling both of those up for man travel would be pretty ridiculous and not at all feasible with current technology. You'd have to put in multiple enormous arrays in space to even consider it, which would be stupid expensive and also really hard to get there. But for sending small, wafer-thin devices no bigger than the guts of an iPhone, it could work. There aren't many travel guides to give us details about our lovely destination of Alpha Centauri outside of video games, but what we do know is it's a binary star system, like the Outer Rim system that Tatooine is part of in Star Wars. So that if you uh, that's how we talk about bit. space. Uh, that is a tad misleading though, because Alpha Centauri actually does have a third star in its system called Proxima Centauri. It's just smaller and super far away, and is believed to be orbiting Alpha Centauri A and Alpha Centauri B, which are circling each other. She loves him. He loves her. It's, it's third wheeling. Nice. Yeah. Some scientists believe there's an Earth-sized planet orbiting Alpha Centauri B, but it's a little too close to that sun to harbor any life. Other than that, Alpha Centauri also has a water park, a McDonald's, maybe two, I think they're working on it, and probably hibernating Matt Damon just waiting to fuck us all over. JK, there's no water park. We take the Matt Damon. Yes. But hey, we'll learn a lot about the system once we send all those little nanocrafts there. It'll take us just 20 years to get them off the ground, 20 years to send them there, and then another four to get any information back, so, you know, we might all be dead by the time we get the information, but someone's gonna get it. It's gonna be really cool. I'm doing the late 20s thing where I'm like, I'm so old. <laughs> Break Shut <through>. up. <laughs> Breakthrough Starshot isn't the first project by Hawking and Milner. A Breakthrough Listen is another part of their Breakthrough Initiative. They know their brands. They like to break through. Yeah, they, uh, by the way, Breakthrough, uh, Breakthrough Listen is intended to scan radio signals for signs of extraterrestrial life. Naturally, Starshot and Listen will go hand in hand as the tiny nanocraft may be able to send back any signs of life they find while exploring the stars. As for what we should do if we find the other life forms, well, Hawking said at the press conference, pray that it does not find us. Don't he, send your shit into space ray, then! Ray of sunshine, Hawking. We Thanks, just buddy. Stay on our little planet. Don't go sending out our iPhones. Uh, so, what do you guys think of Breakthrough Starshot? Do you think it'll actually be able to achieve interstellar space travel? And how hot was Anne Hathaway in that film? Let us know in the comments down below. And for all your interstellar news, like this video, subscribe to the know. Faster than the speed of sex. Uh, with a like, you haven't had sex with the same people I have. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm gonna skip right over that one. Some scientists believe there's an Earth-sized planet orbiting Alpha Centauri. Some scientists. <laughs> Some scientists believe there's an Earth-sized planet orbiting Alpha Centauri. Oh, God damn it. I melted. The tiny robots, which literally weigh as much as paperweights, will be powered by light. Paper clips. Yep. Paperweights are hip. Yeah, sorry. 